Hi and welcome to Blue Sky Bonsai. I'm Dave and in this video I'm going to show you how to root your cuttings with almost guaranteed success. Let's get straight to the action. So just here on the patio I've got a load of cuttings that I took a year ago. They're waiting, growing. They'll all become bonsai in the future, some sooner than others. In another video I showed you how to make a small bonsai from one of these cuttings. So we go across the patio here. These cuttings are nearly all Sagaretia and they're just growing incredibly well. Got a few pyracanthus here. All of these root really well and just grow them out for a year, a couple of years, maybe longer, and they'll become great bonsai in the future. So before I get started on the tips and tricks, there are some species of trees and shrubs that are very easy to root from their cuttings. So I've listed some of the most popular ones here. If it flashes up too quickly, you can always pause the video. And if you don't see your tree on the list, then please just drop a comment below and tell me about it. Now, equally important are those species that are very challenging or nearly impossible to root from their cuttings. And once again, please just let me know in the comments if you've tried and failed with a species that you don't see on either of these lists today. One more thing before we get started. Regardless of the species that you're trying to root, there's a lot greater chance of successful rooting if you take the cutting in spring or summer. I have actually succeeded on evergreen broadleaf trees early winter in fact, but generally speaking there's much more chance of success in spring and summer. What I've got here is all of my cuttings that I want to pot and what we're going to do is pot each one of them into these are clear yoghurt pots, but they have lines on the side, which is very, very convenient because when they start growing roots outwards, the roots hit the edge and they always just go straight down. This has a really good effect of not letting the roots go round and round, so I'm really pleased with the, the response in these. And then I just use like a skewer to prick the holes in the bottom. do about eight, ten holes. Okay, so let's prepare the first part with a bit of soil. Right, there's my soil mix. I'm just going to wet it first. There's a little bit of dust still in there. So what I'm going to do is prepare the base and stick it in. Right, so to prepare the base, I'm just getting my knife and literally carving a centimetre up all the way around, probably about one millimetre into the bark. So I think it's important to understand the inner workings of a branch to help clarify why we do these cuttings in a certain way. Clearly we all know the outer layer already. So just inside the bark we have the phloem layer which are tiny vascular tubes that take the photosynthesized sugars down towards the trunk, towards the roots. Inside the phloem we have the opposite which is the xylem which takes water and the stored sap up towards the branches and leaves. Now we often talk about the cambium layer as being the whole green layer. But to be more factually accurate, the cambium is really just the inner xylem layer. Inside the xylem we have the sapwood, which is like dying xylem, but it still takes the water up to the branches and leaves. So knowing all that's happening inside, let's see the best way to prepare the cutting ready for it to root. So it's this, you need to cut a straight line all the way round and make sure you get rid of all of the phloem and xylem, that's to say all of the cambium there. 
everything that's green you want to get rid of because if any sap is allowed to get down below the cut point then it's going to try and call it over rather than rooting. strip it away you want to make sure there's no green left. The green cambium layer is still going to try and grow as if it were a normal branch so we want to stop that and try and make the line go all the way around in one circle around. There we go, so no more green showing there. Make sure it's all off. Right that is ready to plant except for one thing. We just dip in the rooting powder. I use this. This is actually not uh, not rooting hormone. Let's put that in there. Bang it in the hole that I made. And now what I'm going to do is press down all the soil around. Because what you don't want now is for that to move at all for the next, say, six weeks. You've got to have that as still as it can. To do that, you want to actually pressurise the soil down a little bit to keep the cutting in the right place. There we go. And now, I'm going to put a bit more soil in there. Next job, we put it into one of these and let's just spray it a bit as we wet. Just a tiny bit there. And I do also have some rooting hormone and I'm going to put literally one drop of it. such a tiny amount into that water but because it's a tiny amount of water so here we go one drop that's all I'm putting a bit more water to mix it in there we go now it's actually therefore staying a bit wet for the next four to six weeks so that has a potential for causing root rot if there were roots but there are no roots yet, so we're just keeping it wet and I'm now going to put it into the incubator so it stays warm and it still gets light and it doesn't go dry. I'm try and keep that absolutely still for six weeks now. Now we do, do the same on the rest. This is a twin trunk and I want it to root from all the way around there and turn into a future twin trunk bonsai. <laughs> Say something eh? in English. Because you're putting on the song about snails whilst I'm recording a video, that's why you should. Video about plants. Now another thing to mention, whilst you're trying to grow roots from these cuttings, you want as many leaves as possible still to be there because the leaves are getting the light energy down the trunks or down the little cuttings to produce the roots here. So I'm not going to cut that off now but when it's got roots, then I'll cut that one off. Okay, so there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight cuttings, all potted. 
Now I'm going to put them in these plant propagators which are ideal for here in Madrid where the air is so dry but it stays nice and humid inside the incubator and you can see there I've already got a few cuttings I took earlier in the year including one uh, disojo maple and a bit of azalea there. Now here in this incubator you can see four seedlings which are loquats, also called medlars. They're really delicious fruits and I planted six and four have taken, so really looking forward to those in the future. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did like it, please hit the like button so that the people at YouTube know you liked it. And if you want to see more of my speeded up action, please go ahead and subscribe. Bye for now.